Welcome to the Bob Balance HealthCast, episode 320, The Importance of Nicotinic Acid in Addictions. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to be discussing nicotinic acids and their impact on addictions. To begin the discussion, I have to ask the question, what is a nicotinic acid and why does it matter? Nicotinic acid is a, uh, a vitamin, and it's okay. called vitamin B3, and we also call it niacin. And many people have taken niacin for high cholesterol or low HDL, the good cholesterol, and it is a, it's a vasodilator. It dilates the blood vessels, and it is a necessary and essential vitamin. Where do we normally obtain it? I mean, you, you take it as a vitamin that implies you take it as a supplement. Supplement, right. But before they had those supplements, where would we get it? We would get it from meat. Okay. Okay, so, so nicotinic acid dilates blood vessels, makes us run farther, gives us gives men better erections, gives gives us more blood flow to every tissue, helps us helps us run after the prey. It was needed in those the olden days so that we could be hunter gatherers and what we ate was about five times as much meat as we eat now. Right. And that's where we got it. So we got lots of nicotinic acid and that is what fueled our hunting and gathering skills. It gave us the ability. And Physiologically, it's what worked in our bodies that gave us that level of alertness, that le level of reactivity, mm -hmm. uh, a payoff. Did, did it give us a payoff in terms of an emotional high? Yes. And and a it, a it, sense of fullness or completeness? Yes, and it attaches to um, opiate receptors, so it makes okay. us feel the endorphins of running, and it also uh, attaches to other Receptors so I can make get a feel... runner's high by eating turkey? Yeah, a little. But you get tired first. But I have to eat, uh, too much of it. <laughs> you get tryptophan, which makes you tired. Tryptophan uh, okay, is another a amino, is an amino acid. So, so beef, horse? At beef, beef, any kind of red meat, red and meat. Some, in, some in chicken, but and chicken and turkey. Okay. But this is, it's basically a red meat kind of thing. Uh -huh. So now that we have developed a um, dietary habit of eating less red meat, less meat at all, mo most of us have a, a deficiency oh. in vitamin B3. So, so I want to understand this because in my lifetime, we really have seen uh, advertising and social marketing mm -hmm. move us in the direction of eating less meat. Right. Because... Eating a lot of meat leads to heart attacks, high blood pressure, that sort of stuff. They thought it did, but, but really they're no. finding it doesn't. Interesting. It doesn't increase your cholesterol. Really, car carbs are what increase cholesterol. Okay. And that's why people are taking cholesterol medicine. Just because meat's made out of or has cholesterol in it does not mean it causes your blood cholesterol to go up because it is metabolized and broken down to amino acids in, in your stomach, intestines, and liver. So, so it didn't correlate directly with life expectancy. I thought that they were telling us we shouldn't eat red meat because it would complement or improve our life expectancy. Right, but they, they said that because they assumed they red know. meat right. increased cholesterol. Okay. But that's, that's just not the case. It's carbohydrates, which have zoomed into our, into our food mm -hmm. uh, uh, plate as it is, and we have lots of carbohydrates in the last 50 years, and that's and cholesterol really wasn't known as an issue before that. We didn't before have we as started getting the carbs. Right. Okay. We ate lots of red meat right. when you know uh, prior to the in the 50s and right. prior to the 60s. Right. So we had lots of that. We had lots of we had lots of vegetables and fruit, and food was not pre-made for us. It was it was more fresh. Made, it was fresh food, fresh fruit, which is we what ate we what was in season. I mean, I can remember mm -hmm. as a kid. 
my parents would go out to what they call truck farms, right? Just outside the mm -hmm. sub suburban area where we live, and load up whenever things were in season. We'd get like Crowder peas or squash, right. or and then we'd eat squash in Forever. five thousand iterations for three weeks. You know, uh -huh, kind of like four. turkey after things. Yeah, exactly, and it's like squash again. You know, and my mom would try to fix different ways to mm -hmm. eat it, but that's what we had because that's what was in season. That was right mm -hmm. and and fresh, and mm -hmm. and then she would. Uh, blanch these things mm -hmm. and can them mm -hmm. so that in the wintertime we could have them. I mean, this is a kid growing up a mm -hmm. long time ago. Right. Now we just go to the grocery store and there are canned goods everywhere. Or frozen foods. Or everywhere. frozen foods. Which is probably better because it has some of the enzymes left and some of the vitamins left in uh -huh. it if it's frozen. But, but what has happened is lots less meat. Yes. And meat is required for many of your essential amino acids and essential vitamins. So if you don't eat meat, then you have to take supplements. Then you have to take a lot of supplements and they better be the right ones. Right. So, and that's, there's, it's hard to find a supplement that will give you everything that meat provides. So when, when I have patients who are vegetarian, I'm not talking about vegan because they eat some fish and eggs and usually. So, but but people who eat vegetables and, and, and carbohydrates mm -hmm. and they eat fruit, but that's it. Then I find that at, as there, I put testosterone in them and say, you need more amino acids to, you know, from meat like protein and no quinoa doesn't give that all to you. Right. I mean, that's, that's their, oh, I eat quinoa every day in a huge pile. No. You have to have that a volume. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and so they, they take testosterone and their muscles ache because they don't have, they aren't getting the building blocks for muscle. The way muscle works is you build it up. And with testosterone, you break it down every time you work out, and then you build it back up the next day. So basically, that's why we set, tell people to use weights every other day because they're breaking down, building up, breaking down. Right. So, so to do that, you have to have all of the building blocks of muscle, and those come from meat. So right. those are the amino acids. But now we know you also have to have a vitamin that comes from meat, and that's B3 or niacin. So niacin is very important to people who are vegetarian. They have to have that vitamin. They can't really do without it if they want to age in a healthy fashion. Without it, they, they just have skin hanging, muscle goes away, they don't, they, and, and, and they crave the niacin or the nicotinic acid, same thing. They crave it, and all, most of my women who are vegetarian drink a lot. Because that fills a lot, of alcohol. a lot of alcohol. They fill the receptors. Now, I'm not saying everybody, but they fill the receptors that are craving nicotinic acid with alcohol, and it makes them feel better. So genetically, it doesn't we're do the same thing. to need nicotinic acid. Right. And if we don't have it, the receptor sites that it's supposed to saturate are screaming for attention. Right. And we have found behaviorally, experimentally, mm -hmm. that certain what we call addictions what, that, that are mm -hmm. treated, uh, that, that certain of those substances that we use to feed our addictions are really feeding our craving for nicotinic acid. Right, which is hopeful. So in as this a physician then, if I were seeing you for alcoholism, mm -hmm. uh, you would recommend less or no alcohol and instead <laughs> no alcohol and meat and nicotinic acid. Right. Interesting. And you, the problem with nicotinic acid in the past, we've we've known this about alcohol and niacin and nicotinic acid uh, since the 30s. No one's really embraced it because it's a vitamin. So they, you know, medicine usually has gone away from supplements and vitamins and given you a drug. Uh, but but they've known this, and and many people do treat alcoholism with uh, vitamin B3 and other Bs. But having said that, they don't have a good available. B for you, and so the um, there is a there's a new product um, Neo Forty, which is a chewable nicotinic acid um, uh, formula that you can chew, and it starts dissolving through your mouth and and, and all the way down your your uh, esophagus into your stomach, so you absorb it immediately, and you don't get the side effects of oral 
niacin, which is like that flushing and, and nausea that some people get with oral niacin. You don't get any of that. So we found a, a, a good way to give it now. Because it starts to metabolize in your mouth? Yeah, it goes it directly always into go to your, your stomach and then have those stomach acids attack it and make And you turn nauseous. it into nausea. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's something that you can chew twice a day or chew once a day. I mean, alcoholics would have to chew it, chew it twice a day mm -hmm. to fill up all the receptor sites and try to make them feel good but so what they, would they crave the alcohol less right or the, or the, the craving would go down from the alcohol right and but it, it doesn't really block the payoff it just blocks the craving well in preparing for this discussion one of the things that you were talking about was the cellular energy cycle right called the krebs cycle right could you talk about that well a bit? i can i'm not going to go through the krebs cycle because those of you who took chemistry organic chemistry um were, were horrified they had to memorize this thing. But but basically what the Krebs cycle does is it is a, a cycle that produces energy in our cells. Every cell in your body makes energy out of the substances we give it, blood sugar. Right. and right. and uh, But they require certain either amino acids or vitamins to work as enzymes within the cell. So they're intracellular. And in the Krebs cycle, to make energy for any cell to be healthy, you need nicotinic acid. So you need vitamin B3 throughout your body in an adequate amount for you to take food and make energy. So many times we're sick. How, and how is that playing with essential fatty acids? Because nicotinic acid and essential fatty acids are two of the things. Different that, things. Okay. okay. So so the, the, three, the three, or excuse me, the three things that, that give us deficiency of nicotinic are toxins, which we can do very little about. Toxins in the environment. Environment, in, food, in our water, food, in everywhere. Air. So okay. we can't do much with that, but we can. The other is lo uh, lack of vitamin B3, a nicotinic acid. So we can supplement that. And the third is essential fatty acids. Those are the fatty acids that if you're on a low fat diet, you're missing. You know, you, we give fish oil, we give... Um, we give flaxseed oil, we give, that's basically, those are the essential fatty acids. They take the place of our food fat. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to eat a lot of fatty foods, but you can take these oils every day and they will replace it. So those two things assist the Krebs cycle in making enough oxygen and decrease the, the need for, or the, the need for drugs instead of nicotinic acid. So you're saying that our food cycles have, through mass production and pre prepared foods, and dietary choices, and the government telling us to eat more and the carbs, government telling us what we need to eat, and and weighting our purchasing and our food stamps and our, all that mm -hmm. to steer us in the direction of what they want. Mm -hmm. That now, in addition to the volume of foods that we ingest, whatever the, the recommended source of those. We need to supplement ingredients that once were in our diets already that genetically are requirements for us. Right. And that essential fatty acids mm -hmm. is one of those mm -hmm. uh, and that nicotinic acid is, the is other. another. But there's other things in meat. You also need to eat meat or okay. meat so daily. We should eat meat. Even vegetarians have to find a way to supplement. Yeah, they, what they, they would have to have a supplement meat. that's equivalent to the amino acids found in meat. Okay, and, and are the there such and the vitamins out there. That yeah, they... there are. I can't recommend one. Right, you would have to usually use several. Yes, to get the to get the payoff. The payoff that you need. Right. So, dietary supplements is its own scientific field now, trying yeah. to to offset what our what we've done to ourselves. Products. Yeah. It's not that the food's bad. It's that the, what we choose to eat is 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 not healthy. Well, some of that, you know, you've seen the studies. I've seen the studies where, like, the inner city poor uh, recommendation, eat fresh greens. And they go with $5 to the store to feed their yeah, family. Yeah, they can't, they can't do it. And they can't it. buy greens. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not affordable. So mm -hmm. they buy potato chips. Food and, stamps actually are... I mean, you can use food stamps for fresh food. Actually, I was in line behind somebody using food stamps yesterday at the grocery mm -hmm. store. And they were, the grocery store was pulling like one particular brand of apple juice off because it had sugar in it, something that they weren't allowed to use it for food stamps. Mm -hmm. So they had to go get a different brand mm -hmm. of apple juice. And they pulled out uh, one loaf of bread because that particular loaf of bread wasn't on the food stamp menu. I mean, I mean mm -hmm. the store had to track all that mm -hmm. stuff and pull them off. 
I don't know if that's for health or for cost. I, I don't know, I can't but tell. I had not seen that done. I mean, and mm -hmm. fortunately, I'm blessed enough not to have been on a food stamp, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. But but the mechanics of the process are regulated, right? And so the go it's a government it's government practicing medicine basically yeah. by saying you you eat this or that. Now that could be done in a good way. Well, like at either saying you should buy this this number of fresh foods or vegetables, but then you have to have somebody cook it. Well, I mean, any government, ha you know, say the government in a commodity market buys 50 million tons of peanut butter, then mm -hmm. they got to sell peanut butter mm -hmm. to, You're right. to break even. And so they weight the enforcement in the direction of encouraging you to buy peanut butter. Once again, we've hit economics versus health and they're bashing. And they're, trying to balance the two. And they're, they're I mean, it's a challenge. Other. It's a real uh, ethical, genuine, real challenge to find the overall balance that our society needs. So and here's, so society needs some, some other things besides, okay. I mean, it links to this, all right. but just think of all the, um, so all the addictions and all of the aggressive acts, you know, the school, right. the school shootings. I mean, that has to do with both genetics, upbringing, and they've now found that that has to do with this over-aggression that certain people feel if they are starved of niacin. If you don't have B3 and that comes from meat, then that, that um, craving to be aggressive and go out and get meat from the caveman days right. is turned into aggression toward other people. Just aggression, period. Right. Yeah. And so they found that this aggressive act is often dietary right. and that they don't have enough of the niacin to fill those receptor sites to make people feel satiated. Well, you were saying in the, in the preparatory notes that mm -hmm. we exchanged that without uh, NAD, the receptor sites on all of your cells that should be attached to B3, nicotinic mm -hmm. acid, and cr are craving something to bind to, mm -hmm. and that we respond to that uh, craving by turning to alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, other forms of tobacco, and opiates. Right. So a lot of the addictive diseases or disorders that we try to treat mm -hmm. medically and psychologically are anchored to a craving at a cellular level that could be ameliorated or reduced if we supplemented the NAD, if, if we gave them the nicotinic acid that they used to get in meat. Right. And that's, and so we've always said, we don't believe that addiction is just a just choice. A character. It's not a characterological disorder. It's yeah, a it's, medical it's, disorder. Yeah. It's a medical disorder. It's a lack of something. And this, th this group of this, this was kind of a, a, a whole lot of research brought into, mm -hmm. into one uh, comp compilation, but they, they believe that this is, I mean, aggression and and uh, all of these different addictions are just a need in 10% of the population. It's not everybody. Right. It's genetically 10% of the population. Huh. And so if we could treat from an so, early so age... So goes back to a previous a podcast genetic, we did on to toxic masculinity. Right. You know, th th these are the toxic elements... The area. ...that contribute. Right. Yeah. So it's... And it isn't everyone, and you don't have to look at everyone like they could be an addict... Only 10% can be okay. an addict. Soon we'll have the genetics for it, so we could actually test right. for that early on. Susceptibility to that. Yeah, and yeah. it doesn't mean everybody with the genetics, we know this, is going to become an addict. Um, sometimes, genetics don't have to be destiny. Right, and genetics can be dealt with otherwise. We could we could treat them with with niacin. We could treat them with exercise, like over-exercise. You know, the people that run marathons and stuff, oftentimes they are filling their the uh, runner's high that we discussed. Yeah, they're yeah. they're um, craving with running because they're with filling endorphins. their endorphins. Yes. So they're filling the sites. Saturate those cells. So so sometimes I mean sometimes you can do things that are positive right. to instead of negative to uh, answer a genetic craving. So the only thing that you found that you recommend to people to use is this Neo Forty, and primarily because. It doesn't cause the nausea effects that take in nicotinic acid as a pill. It's more available too. Another more available means you're it's absorbed better. You get a better blood level. You uh, you have inst, kind of an instant so reaction. More available to your body, to your and body cells, and not your to cells. The marketplace. No, okay. more available to body and cells, and and it's 
uh, currently, Dr. Lee only allows it to be sold through doctors. I right. mean, that probably will change. But but it really is a great su substance or su supplement, supplement to take instead of any of these other things, that, and it's a lot less expensive. So that's that. an interesting point. You, you go regularly, two or three times a year, to medical conventions where <laughs> these topics are discussed and these products are presented mm -hmm. to physicians. And so you found this doctor and you found this product and you've done the research on it, read the data, mm -hmm. and have been using it in your practice. Mm -hmm. But it is not yet something that's available mass market right. that I could just go to Walgreens and get. And it you probably, think that's coming, but... I think it's coming, but it's not... But it, it filters out through the reference to physicians who are educated and mm -hmm. understand and know why this condition would be a, of concern and how to remedy it with this product. Right. So, I mean, you can go to Neo40 and look at that, and they usually have a list of doctors who sell it. So, so we, but we And are, this is not a commercial. It's just that that's the substance that I found works the best. Yeah, you don't get anything best. out of, of this. No, huh, this I don't get anything there's, out of this. There's no remuneration here for talking about mm -mm. Neo40. It's just that uh -huh. this, I, when I was researching the um, the claims right. of, the, of the research that I read, I was researching it um, on going more in other areas, I realized that the mechanism was valid. The mechanism of... Um, receptor sites being empty and filling with other things. That was valid in other was research. Cycle? Yeah, in the Krebs cycle, but it right. also is in other, the receptors on the cells. Right. On the cells that accept the nicotinic acid, there's a craving that, that occurs if you don't fill them. So, and that craving can be filled in many ways. So you can go with the scientific explanation and some of this looked at the science, or you can go with the non-scientific scientific explanation like my mother says, because I said so, you need to do this. <laughs> so you need to look at the possibility of nicotinic acid, especially if you struggle with cravings for things like cigarettes, opiates, and alcohol, if they impact you. And especially if you've moved your diet away from the consumption of red meat. So please look at it. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.